It's Jersey Jack Pinball's Pirates of the Caribbean. This came out in 2018. Game designed by Eric Minier. Mechanics by Dan Malter. Wally Welch. Yolanda Weisenton. Sorry. Joe Katz. uh, JT Harkey and Keith Johnson on software. Jay Zielinski on artwork. Jean-Paul DeWin on animation. And Sound of Music by the incredible David Thiel. Pricing at launch. (laughs) Ah, uh, the good old days. Remember when everybody thought this was expensive? Uh, so 2018 pricing, $8,500 for the standard, $9,500 for the LE, twelve five for the collector's edition. Uh, for kicks, I went on pin side. For, for uh, used older games, we tend to give what they're going for now. Uh, so I kind of like pulled the median price. Uh, it's about 16000 for the standard, about 20000 for the LE, and about 30000 for the collector's edition. Uh, they base those on sales that take place on pinside.com. So uh, this is a game that went insane in value uh, and, and for good reason, right, Nick? Uh, for very good reason. And I think that we should, even before we get into the review, we should tee, there's there's a story behind this game. Uh, I mean, you got to kind of address the elephant in the room. Why is it so much? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of a tragic story in, in, in some ways, if you think about it. And I'm just going to say up front that I, I, I definitely put some thought into this review. I've got about a page and a half notes, so I'll kind of interject, Kevin, as we go through our usual format. Um, but for context for the viewers that maybe don't know this, one of the highlights for Buffalo Pinball was going to do the reveal at Pinball Expo in 2017 of Jersey Jack Pirates. And uh, that stream's still up. Kevin, I take it yep. on our channel. I'll, I'll pull it up. I can show it while we're talking. And I remember seeing and playing this game. I remember Eric talking about the features in this game and just like my mouth was, was wide open. This is, this was a pivotal moment in, in pinball for me. Um, yeah, the, the reveal stream and playing, it was a blur. I went to bed that night and I woke up the next morning, you know, we're, we're staying at pinball expo we're in the hotel. I could not wait to run down to the floor to play this game. I've never in my life been so excited for a pinball machine than I was for Jersey Jack Pirates after having played it during that stream and wanting to play more. All I wanted to do was to keep playing this game and it was the most impressive pinball machine I've ever seen. People often ask me, you know, what my favorite pinball machine is and uh, a lot of times I answer in terms of what I'm currently playing or something new I have, but the answer overall is Jersey Jack Pirates. It is my desert island game is a game i will take with me to the assisted living facility it is the last game i would ever sell if i ever had to sell a game i almost made a mistake of selling it because it's going last year because it's going for so much money and thank god i didn't but here's the story behind this and 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 the price well it's a great game but the reason that the price is so crazy is that jersey jack this is a, a huge blunder unfortunately i don't know all the details behind it and they've gotten way better since then i think there's Hard lessons learned, but they showed this off in October 2017 at Pinball Expo. The game did not ship until September 2018. Kevin and I got one of the first ones off the line. So already you've got so many people highlighted. We probably took so many pre-orders, but a year is a long time to have money kind of earmarked in your mind for a game. Other games come along, people get tempted, they spend money and they get those games. The other things that happened is that there were features in there that they showed off and they said would be in the game that they had to take away. One was a, a the disc was like a three spinning disc. I think it's three, not four. Three spinning disc. It all light up. It was it was definitely impressive looking. Uh, they had to change it to just a regular spinning disc. Okay, the chest would open and close. That no longer open and close. It's just open. So between a year. And then having to come out and say we're taking features away from the game, I think people abandoned it. I don't think I know they did. Then the game comes out in, in September of 2018. Um, you know, it takes a while for the games to be made and delivered to people. 
Keith Johnson was on the show and we asked him what, you know, why did this game stop being made? And he said, look, it's simple. Um, you know, we had enough to make parts for like six months. At that time, we looked at the orders coming in. Do we order more parts for this or do we, do we move on to the next game? There was not enough demand for more parts. Hence, they moved on to the next game. And they've never rerun this game. I don't know why they've not rerun this game. There's been speculations so that there's licensing issues. Um, the build of materials has to be expensive. You can always adjust for that in cost. There's obviously demand for this game. Will they ever rerun this game? I don't know. No, Nobody knows. Okay? But that is... That is the story. Now, the thing is, this game is a is a masterpiece. It took people, you know, probably that time from September through March to realize it's a masterpiece. And then even, it might even take a six months or a year, right, for some people to play it, to overcome the idea that there were things taking out of it and the game's not that good. It was also expensive at the time. I mean, $9,500 at that time was an expensive for a pinball machine. And now, you know, so many people who have been honest with themselves, I'll say that, realize that the game is something special and they want it um but unfortunately there's just not enough of them made and kevin i'm gonna try to pull this up i'm sorry i don't have it ready um i want to look at how many exist maybe you can show why don't you show it on your screen can you do yeah, that I, I have the the pins i listed because there's not a lot of them i want to see yeah. i want to see the you number of collectors like the versus, owners here yeah. yeah like if you scroll down so okay so here's the le that kevin is showing mm-hmm 378 people on Pinside reported to have this in their collections. There's 603 that want this game. There's only 14 on location in public. Think about that, guys. This game, I'm going to tell you right now, this game, I promise you, if this game was made to meet demand, and this game was all over and people got access to it, I don't know how it could not be the number one game on Pinside. It is not. It's like 14th or 15th. It's something ridiculous. Like Foo Fighters is ahead of it. Like, mind-blowing. Like that's that is, yeah, it's tied with Cactus con- Canyon for fourteenth. What a tragedy! It <laughs> is a tragedy. Ca- but you Canyon. think about it. You think about it, Kevin. Yeah. I, I and, and this is like a lot of preamble before we talk about this game. But I want this is a love letter to this game, and it's also our first Jersey Jack review. So I really want to. I really want to go hard on it. Um. There's fourteen on location, for the LE. We can look at the the SE and the other ones, but yeah. most people haven't really gotten a time to spend on this game. Maybe some people have played it in collections. There's 19 SEs. Usually when location. you play in somebody's collection, you don't really get to spend enough time. But there's 19 to SE. Like the, these games don't exist in the wild. They just don't. And six. Six CE. CE. Yes, that is abysmal. People are not getting to play the best pinball machine ever made. Um, it's kind of heartbreaking. I, I really wish they, they'd rerun this. But I just want to put that context up and, and have people understand what's going on. And I do want to point out, this is my victory lap, and Kevin, please join me here. Okay. For a fucking full year. Okay? when we After we played this game and revealed it, we came on the podcast and told everybody that this game is amazing. Like, this is a must-buy game. All right? So we did our part. I feel bad for the people who came into pinball, like... They weren't in pinball at that time, so it was never an option on the table for them. That sucks. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, All right. Game is amazing. We you know, we told you it was amazing. Some people took our word for it and bought it, and they were super happy with it. Um, other people sat on the sidelines. So, and I understand, like, $9,500, $8,500, that's still a lot of money, especially, you know, what, six years ago now. Uh, but yeah, this game, totally worth it. So Mr. Mr. Noob Taxes said, I think code would be the reason it's never number one. I disagree. The code is amazing. It doesn't have a wizard mode. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But that's I don't think it's the reason. I think people don't have access. People tend to vote number one games for games that, number one, if you buy the game, it's in your collection, and there's a lot of people who own the game, they're going to vote it number one because they have it's the best game ever. Or if it's a game that's everywhere and they can play in location, they can do that as well because there's people that don't own games that will vote games high. If people aren't playing this game and they don't have access to and can appreciate it, that's what's keeping it from number one. That's what's definitely keeping it from number one. <clears throat> I agree. I agree. All right. Yeah. If people, people need to get their hands on it. And, you know, to code wise, to that point, uh, I think JJP's shine best when you have them at home and you can really dig into them and you have the time and the ability to really appreciate the code. Although I will say, JJP, the structure of this code is pretty straightforward. 
But even still, to learn the nuances, I think that's really when it shines. Yeah, Kevin, you can roll with me. Keep us on track. But um, okay. because you brought up code, I want to I want to get into that because okay. there's this misconception about this game. We'll move and again, it's because people don't have access to it, and they there is there's a difference between depth and something that's complicated, right? Or a, a, obtuse, right? So this game has depth. All right, it like. It has a lot to that. I, I understand like what somebody might say um, it is. But like at the end of the day, all you need to know about this game is that to start a mode, which they call chapters in the game, you shoot the shot in the back. Um, what do you call that shot? It's the, the star, star map. map. Yeah. The star map. It says chapter select. It's lit up. If it's not lit up, you basically hit any shot in the game. Pretty much any shot in the game, almost any shot in the game, will let that up. That's all you've got to do. If you ever step up to it, that's all you've got to do. If you do that and you have a great game, you're going to get to probably one of the five mini wizard modes. You're not locked out from any of the mini wizard modes by just doing that very, very basic thing. There's games out there that if you don't do some like esoteric thing, you're not going to get to a wizard mode. Not the case with this. This game is more straightforward than Rush. So anybody who has a rush and understands rush and thinks this game is complicated, it's not. I own both games, I can tell you. Okay? It's got depth, though. It definitely has depth to it. All right? Like, there's 22 different characters to choose from. So somebody's like, oh, my God, there's 22 characters. That doesn't change the fundamentals of start a chapter, play through the modes. Also, in this game, you're not locked out of things. Everything is available all the time, which is typical of a Keith Johnson game, right? I'm going to contrast that with Iron Man of all games, okay? Iron Man is very, doesn't have depth, but it is complicated in some ways, and I'll tell you why. In Iron Man, you've got to know order of operations, in Iron Man, if you start the monger, you can't start Whiplash. Well, that's going. Now, if you start War Machine, and that's going, then you can start Whiplash. Okay? If no multiples are going on, you start Whiplash, then you can't start monger. Right? There's, an order, there's a weird order of operations that you really got to have somebody tell you you've got to figure out and play a lot of times. These Jersey Jack games like this one... In Godfather, they don't have an order of operations. You can start multi-balls at any time. You can start chapters and modes during multi-balls. Everything's just always happening. So maybe that's a little confusing, right? Because everything's, everything's always happening everywhere all at once, right? So it might seem like overload, but it's pretty straightforward. And all the chapters are is that there's going to be a movie scene, and whatever characters are in that movie scene their, those character shots will be lit up on the on the play field and you shoot them. That's that's it. That's it. Now there's more. Let's talk about the depth for a second. So we mentioned 22 different characters to choose from. All those characters, um, they have like it will it will say like what they do, like multi ball timers longer, multi ball save is longer. You know, three chapters are lit, so three modes are lit at the start. You don't have to qualify them. Very, very, very straightforward. Now, some characters, yes, in terms of depth, they do have an extra perk that's not noted on that screen. But you, again, you don't need to know that to get far into the game. That's not going to prevent you. Characters are definitely well balanced. So, I know it's. I know it can be overwhelming. I know people don't have access to this game, but the game is very intuitive and makes logical sense. Very much so. Um, one thing I really want to talk about, I'm going to bounce around. I'm going to try not to miss anything. I, I, I did not do a good job in organizing my notes here, but, um, you know, speaking of the character selection, you know, another criticism that I hear is theme integration. So I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing around, Kevin, forgive me. But like some people are like, oh, the theme isn't good uh, because like, I don't know, they don't have doesn't sound show movie clips, clips. movie. Yeah. No, it shows movie clips, but well, doesn't show... The Doesn't actors show, in those yeah, movie clips. Exactly, exactly. But it, the actors are all over the game. Like, their right. names are all over the game. You select the characters. Like, they're all over the game, right? right. Like, right. it's a stupid thing, in my opinion. But let me explain this for the level of theme integration that this team did 
which is why it's a masterpiece. Remember, there's 22 characters. So they, in terms of giving these characters perks, it wasn't a mindless decision on what perks to give characters. I'll give you an example. Rigetti is that pirate who looks like me if I was on meth and had one eye, okay? <laughs> he's that guy. Um, he, in the movie, he's missing an eye. His ability is when you're on the ship, if you hit the action button, you will put another ball into play. You get a two-ball multi-ball when you're on there by hitting the button. That's his perk. Yep. Eye, because he's missing an eye. Two eyes. There you go. Elizabeth Swan. Okay, Elizabeth Swan, played by Kieran Knightley, who is the, the biggest Mary Sue I've ever seen in a movie. This ruins it pretty much. But anyways, it won't get me going. Uh, she starts. She starts a game with three chapters. Chapters are modes, if you remember. Always lit. Why is that? Because she's a strumpet and she's juggling multiple dudes in the movie. She's juggling. She's got uh, Jack Sparrow, uh, Norton or whatever his name is, and Will Turner. Like, Weatherby Swan. He's a, he's a character you select. He is immune to being plundered. Why? Because he's the governor. And on and on and on. They did this for 22 characters. Is that theme integration? I'm going to say yes. I'm gonna, more theme integration than any pinball machine I've ever played in my life. More thought has gone into that than anything. The other theme integration would bounce around this is rules. Each movie chapter you play, you have to hit characters in that scene, which I mentioned. Um, they had to go through all the scenes and figure out what characters are in that scene because those are the character shots that are lit up in the game. That takes. They didn't have to do that. They could have just made it like any old game. This arrow's lit, that arrow's lit, and that never changes. But that's in there. And by the way, do you know how many uh, how many uh, chapters or modes are possible in the game, Kevin? A lot. <laughs> I remember. So there that. are there's there's five movies in this game. Okay, all five movies are represented, and each five movie has five chapters slash modes. Okay, but each each movie before the game starts, we'll select between one of 20 to 26 chapters or modes. Okay, so think about, just think about that for a second. You're only gonna play, f like, for the, uh, um, on Stranger Tides, that's, that's, that's a movie? On, yeah. On Stranger Tides, you're, when you start a game, the game's gonna randomly pick five modes from a potential 21 to 26 for that movie. So those scene clips are in there from that movie. Mm -hmm. And it's going to do that for all five movies. So, you know, one of the, the kind of bragging points is there's like, there's 3.4 sextillion possible combinations. You'll never play the same game twice. That may seem overwhelming, but when you, if you listen to what I'm saying, you walk through this, you just start a mode. <laughs> Multiballs will happen by starting shots. Um, it's just an impressive masterpiece of a game and theme integration and love that unfortunately the crime here is that most people just the owners know i know kevin knows but i don't think it's represented and that's why i want to really spend time talking about this game on the podcast and doing justice to it to just let everybody know not what you're missing because i really hope that like you know i see a lot of cope like all oh, the game's slow complicated and there's no theme integration like no you're wrong i don't know if that's cope I don't know if it's just because you not spend time with it, but I promise you that this, if they reran this game, so many people who have had cope about it will get their wallets out, and they should. They should. And Kevin's showing some gameplay of, um, you know, he keeps on going back to when we were doing the reveal stream. The game is not slow at all, man. That thing is brutal with the disc. Even when they change the, the way the disc works, it's brutal. You've got to stay on your toes. Always something happening. Um... Yeah, I think the, oh, the single disc is more dangerous than the triple disc was. Yeah, maybe. I'm not, I'm not spending enough time. There's there's five mini wizard modes in the game. The, the biggest problem with this game is that it's missing the uh, wizard mode at the end of the game. There is a rumor that they've not abandoned this game, so will we ever see it? I have no idea. I, I hope to God. I mean, it's an unfinished masterpiece. So, Kevin, I, I did a lot of talking because um, I really wanted to try to clear up some confusion or common criticism I hear this game and why people say what they say. I think I did a pretty good job, but why don't you, uh, 
where do you want to take this? Yeah, I think you you did a good job of you know like covering a lot of the 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 more the, there 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 tends to be like a dialogue that happens around every game. There's certain talking points that get hit, and you know for 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 whatever reason, you know those are some of the ones for pirates. So um, good job setting the table. Uh, you talked about rules, uh, so I think you got a good um, handle on that. Let's move on. To, let's talk about some of the other like categories that we talk about when we do a uh, pinball machine review. So let's talk about the art. Um, the art, like you mentioned, it has all the all the characters. They have like a, a realistic, hand drawn, hand painted feel to them. So if you like, say, you know, Christopher Franchi style art, I would say that's that's the kind of feel you get with the artwork on this. It's not my favorite, but I think it fits for a license like this where you have to get image likenesses of actors and get them approved and and have it look realistic without necessarily just being pictures photoshopped and dropped onto a play field um the play field itself it looks it looks good like the use of art or use of color is good it's not overly filled with art so you can follow the ball i think it does a good job through the 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 style of the art showing where the the shots go and the different colors that correspond with the different inserts for the different movies and things like that um yeah and overall you, you get the kind of this it feels like you're playing a pirate game there's like the ship is has a wooden plank surface that you play on and it's got the the other ship in the the back left corner that looks good and the the treasure chest and the cabinet art is kind of kind of whatever it's it's good but it's not not among my favorites but um i think they get a, did a, a good job with it overall i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's one of the best art packages in pinball but um it gets the job done you might say gets the job done <laughs> <laughs> any other thoughts on the art no, no, I think you've covered it. Okay. Um, sound? Wow. Can we talk about the sound? Let's sound is amazing. Sound. I mean, it's. To, I, I know you said Hobbit. Maybe, maybe it is, but to me, this is the best sound package. Like, yeah. Or at least right up there. David okay. Thiel absolutely crushed it. I love the fact that they got uh, Gibbs from the movie as the voice actor to do callouts. He absolutely nails it. Like some the best callout, some of the best callouts in pinball, uh, bar none. So. I forgot how many music scores David Theo composed for. I think each character has their own or mode, like, but like, there's a lot of music in this game for sure. Yeah, they uh, they did. David did a great job with the sound. They had a, uh, it's a mix of like, um, it's most. I, I think it's mostly David Theo songs in it, uh, but they're all piratey and, and on point. The the sound effects too are just really good. Like, you know, I think about the chapter start sound effects and when you when you hit the loop and it's got the like the the sing-songy uh sound that happens and they're all just really good or the when you start a multi-ball and it's got, got the uh the pistols that fire off i you know david knows what he's doing he obviously just just nails it um incredible sound package i think i think hobbit is still better uh in my book but obviously this is up there with with the best absolutely um by the, by the way, I missed uh, a real point that I, I should like the, the the real shame is that we're gonna miss something about this game. When yeah, we're talking about it. Um, but one thing I I miss because I don't look at it or think about it, but the game literally has an LCD, okay, on like the by the lockdown bar, which shows you at all points in time what the best shot to hit is. Like, <laughs> you can play the game. And you can just say, how do you play the game, Beck? You see that compass down there? Just hit the shot that it's showing you to hit. That's it. Like, this game couldn't, this game, it couldn't be easier for somebody who doesn't know what's going on. Right. It's, it's kind of insane. It's kind of, there's no other pinball machine that I know of that has anything like that. Yeah, it's a really cool feature. Uh, and it's one of those things where, yeah, let's just, uh, let's take it and make it super easy for folks. And it, again, it's thematically integrated because yeah. in the movies, that's what... You know, it's like your heart's desire or whatever in the in the oh. compass is what the compass points to. So it, it's a compass. It points to the most valuable thing on the on the play field. Again, another level of theme integration that just uh, kind of sets this game apart. Um, OK, sound. We talked about toys. Oh, my goodness. The toys on this even minus the, the triple spinning disc and the opening and closing chest. You've got one of the most amazing 
playfield toys slash mini playfields. I don't know. Yep. I consider it more of a toy because it's like this massive mechanical masterpiece in the upper left hand corner or upper right hand corner of the game, which is the the Black Pearl, the rocking ship. And what makes it more than just an upper play field is that there's a cannon on the on the left hand side of it that you can load and fire across the play field to sink another physical ship on the play field. It's one of the one of the coolest physical things in a pinball machine, in my opinion. Hundred percent, man. That that ship never gets old. It's super fun. Uh, upper play field, very very cool. Again, theme integration of hitting the, the spinners represent the sails, hitting that, and then you can see the progress, and then loading the cannon, then finally firing the cannon. Again, great theme integration uh, in terms of toys and what's actually on the play field. Uh, we'll get into the display, but all that incorporates in nicely into the display as well in terms of telling the user what's going on and representing that in kind of really a nice artistic way. Yeah, and even the like the chest is a super cool ball lock, even though it's not. Yeah. It doesn't have the opening and closing uh, on the the released version, and you can mod that. There's a mod you can get, and I have it on mine where you can uh, where you can make it open and close. Um, but yeah, the uh, the the ship itself uh, puts us in top tier, and then even just the other physical uh, features of this game, like the the whirlpool ramp on the left that can divert. You can either come back around as a ramp shot or divert into the the whirlpool, and the the ship are just two other cool, super cool features. And of course, it's got. The, the release version has the single spinning disc, um, which still, again, it's, a, it's integrated with the, the theme. It's the map and it adds some chaos and, and, um, ran randomization to the, to the game, which keeps it fun and interesting. I think that's one of the other things, like from a general standpoint, this game does a really good job, um, of being a wide body that doesn't feel slow and floaty, right? It feels no, fast and snappy um the the action is it's got the what four pop bumpers on the left hand side the spinning disc uh the ramp shots are pretty close to the flipper so if you miss yep. you're gonna pay uh the interesting in lane out lane configuration keeps you making sure you have to nudge a lot um so you don't just kind of like sit a hit a shot and take a nap and wait for the the ball to come back you have a good time and, and this game does the the great balance that i was talking about with godfather as opposed to um blood zeppelin or rush where you can like some games can be extremely short and brutal like the ball save is not mm -hmm. on by default that spinning disc is just absolutely uh can be absolutely brutal when it's on um the slingshots are powerful and snappy like there's a lot of ways that and then the shots are close there's a lot of ways to die in this game that you really need to you know get the multi ball strung together working towards a multi ball so you can play safely through it and progress towards the end so um, you know, I have games that are brutally short. I have games that are long. I have games that are medium. And that's what I love about a pinball machine and want to keep a pinball machine. I don't, I was playing Rush the other day and it's like, man, I love that game. But every time I play it, it turns into like this hour game and it's just almost unplayable for me at this point. Whereas this, it's like, I don't know what I get. If I'm playing, playing, playing great, I'm going to play it for a long time, but that's no guarantee of that. I've, I've got to, I cannot be an autopilot. I've got to be on and I've got to be focused at all times because that ball is truly wild in that game completely i nailed it um all right you mentioned display let's talk about display and lighting you want yeah, to take, well, the, take the lead yeah sure i mean jp to win just uh this is this is my favorite display of, of the jersey jack games i think it's just very well done um one criticism is you can't see like we said you can't see the actors in the the movie clips it's fine i'm, I'm not here to watch a movie uh, the movie clips are short and brief. They set the stage for that, and you're playing through it. But I, I love kind of the always-on display, as, as you can kind of see right now what Kevin's got on the screen. It's showing um, the chapters that are available, obviously the score. But represented on there in that map is the progress that you're making towards a multi-ball. Like, for example, the uh, was I think it's Dead Man Tell No Tales, the purple one, right, Kevin? Yeah. Um, as you hit that spinner... It's on the far right side. There's a ship, and you can see. And every time you, the spinner's going, the ship is moving towards like an island. It's so cool. It's such a nice representation of how close. It's not like the screen saying, "Oh, 50 more spins to multi ball." Like, no, no, no. You could just see that the oh, I'm hitting it. The ship's getting closer. The ship's really quick. Probably one more rip, and I've got a multi ball. It's such a beautiful artistic thing that's going on. It communicates all the information you didn't you need to know. Um. I, I don't know, man. The, again, I, what more can I say? The, the game is, is is such a masterpiece, and and uh, it fires on all cylinders in, in every aspect. Lighting, 
while they don't have the um what the hot rails is that what they're called kev yeah mm-hmm. they don't have they weren't just jack wasn't doing it then i can only imagine how it would look still brilliant still brilliant lighting effects um Kevin, like, you know, like the extra ball one or like the at the end of the game, like kind of like the water waves, how it flashes blue lower on and then kind of like the night sky towards the top. Yeah. So um, good. How when you're in a certain mode, it's like that mode's color and all like the GI. Yeah. It's just like I, I <laughs> the game is the game is something else. And as I'm going on and on, like, I don't know if we're ever going to see a game like this again, like just with the amount of toys in there the amount of mechanical stuff in there um having da- losing david theo is definitely lost i mean i think godfather this sounds great but like we might not ever see a pinball machine like this for either a long time or maybe never again this was um i think again the tragedy of this game is that they really went all out with it they did through everything in the kitchen sink this was what jersey jack had kind of been moving up towards in, in many ways right they're really dialed in at this point which is a funny expression to use yeah. Um, in this situation, but they're 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 really dialed in with with uh, pirates, and just kind of the botched launch and the fact that this didn't sell for years and years and years where everybody bought one, I think hurts the idea of a company spending this much time and getting to this level of detail on a pinball machine. Um, it's it's a it's a real shame. This is, a, this is a bit of a side tangent, but do you feel like this game is what fueled all the FOMO in pinball that we had during COVID? And I think it continues to a point. You think this was the the catalyst for that? It, it, I'm sure it had some effect, right? Like it it definitely has some effect. How much to what extent? I I don't know. I I, I really don't. Yeah, because if, if people saw this game went up in crazy value and they didn't want to miss out in case there was some amazing game that came out, if they wouldn't want to have to spend like twenty grand on it if yeah. they if they didn't buy it at, at launch, right? I ha- I hate how much this game is worth. I I hate it more than somebody that doesn't own it. Because I've got this, this game could go to fifty thousand dollars, and I wouldn't want to sell it, right? And go to a hundred, and I wouldn't want to sell it. Right. That's and that's a that's a that's that sucks. That's a lot of money to have in in a game, just a pinball machine that was ninety five hundred dollars at launch. Right? That that really sucks. If you if you, if you want to keep this game forever, then it doesn't matter what the price is. And then the problem is too. Let's say it goes to like some. Let's say it goes fifty thousand dollars, and I want to I want to sell it. I'll never get it back. That's the thing. I'll never get this game back. If I sold Metallica, oh, there's a million Metallicas out there. I can get it back. So many people will sell a game and then buy it back because there's plenty of them out there. It is very, very difficult with this game to do that. Yep. So that's another problem. And then we also get into like parts. Like I would love them to rerun it so there's more parts for the game. Now, my game's held up immaculately well, and so is Kevin. I mean, that's a testament to the build quality of Jersey Jack. Kevin, you've played the shit out of your game. I have. Because you streamed it a yep. lot. Have you ever rebuilt the flippers by any chance? Nope. I bet that's a, a discrepancy between yours and mine. You've played yours more than I because you just streamed it a lot. Yeah. But remember you were saying like your flippers couldn't get up. I bet if you rebuilt the flippers or changed the coils and stuff. Anyways, I, di- I digress. Yeah. Mine have they, always they've been, been like that though. My, my right ramp has okay. always been hard on mine. I don't know. It's just something, you know, pinball machines are different. But yeah, I'm sure a rebuild would help too. Yeah. But yeah, it's been holding up great. Let's talk about gameplay. The overall, like the shots, like the geometry of it. What do you What do you think on that? I mean, it's a it's a great layout. It's got some unique things going on. I, I do like the spinning disc. We've seen spinning disc in games before, but it's integrated nicely with the theme. Um, <clears throat> that spinning disc goes off when you hit the map uh, targets, and you got to put it in the map hole, and it will give you a random combination of an award. I forgot how many. Uh, have it in this somewhere of how many combinations um anyways not important right now yeah it's a lot (laughs) yeah it's got it's got some unique things it's got like if it goes out the right out lane there's a chance for it to go back into the shooter lane i mean games have done some similar things but you don't see it too often it's got an interesting design on the left side with the um like the three drain thing it's almost like um um like a paragon kind of thing where if it goes in the middle it drains if it goes in the far left it's safe if it goes to the one to the right of the middle it's safe right so that's that's something you don't see often in games anymore um it's got some it's it's got that nice really loop shot you hit it from like the right flipper through the chest when when the chest's not locking it, it comes around to that upper left flipper and you then you can keep on looping it and looping it and looping it which will start a multi ball or you can also hit the gold targets or you can hit the map targets um or you can hit the map hole right like a lot of things to shoot for in this game 
um, by far. And again, I've already mentioned the uh, upper play field, but a very fun upper play field where it feels fun being up there. You're not up there forever. You've again, you've really got to be focused because the thing's moving, trying to hit the shots. Um, you know, you're lucky if you're up there for a few seconds at the time. I'm just glad we get to watch Jay play a little bit here. It's, it's really the highlight of the show so far. Um, yeah, the, I love the, and I, I mentioned this before with the overall layout of a wide body. Sometimes they can feel kind of wide open or there's not a lot on there or the shots take forever to kind of come back around and you don't get that impression at all from this game. Um, it's not a super, I wouldn't call it a, a flow monster of a game, but you can really get into ripping those ramps. And I, the, uh, the loop shot is probably the most satisfying shot on it to me just ripping it over and over with that upper flipper it's just, it's it's like butter like butter it, yeah and it's got the uh that cool shot um when you're in the the tia Dama shot where you're yeah. in the um at world's edge multi-ball uh the super jackpot you obtain that by holding op- up the left flipper and there's a hole in the play field that you get the ball to fall down into so um you know this it's it's really amazing that um this is Eric's first game, right? Like this, you think you would see this from a season designer and he, he crushed it. And, uh, I'm, as I'm watching the video that Kevin's playing, I saw that one thing that I forgot to mention, this game has a feature called plunder, which makes this a very, very fun multiplayer game where, um, into the theme integration again, where one of the map awards will give you the chance to plunder an opponent's ball or, or score or their character Right, it makes it kind of like an interactive board game in the sense that what you're doing in the game can affect the other players, and that's fine. I mean, you could turn that off if you don't like it. I love it. You know, I started. Tur- I used to turn it off in league, big. Like, oh, you shouldn't be able to plunder the other. Like, why? That's the game. That's yeah. the fun. That's the strategy. Right. You can start hammering the map targets and then trying to get that award so you can plunder an opponent's ball. Suddenly, you've got an extra ball and they've lost a ball. But I mean the. The downside of trying to do that is that you're going to activate the mat, the spinning disc, which can make your play harder. Like it's so cool. There's so much going on in this game, well, but it's even, not complicated. No, we didn't even talk about like liars dice is in there. A yes, whole... that's right. It's got a little mini video mode game in there. Yeah, and you can uh, play it just like they do in the movie. They play liars dice. You can play it and gamble away your your gold or your um I don't know, some of your treasures and things like that tilt warnings it's it's pretty crazy um yeah there's there's just so much i know we're gonna miss something but um uh, i think we've done a good job let's talk about last ability we've had this game since launch you've said it's never really leaving your collection last ability yeah for it's a forever pin easy it's my grail pin it's the forever pin it's something i'm super proud to own I, something i'm very fortunate to own um i tell eric once a year thank you for making this game it's the it is just something special Agreed. Uh, with the, you know, you documented some of the the stats on how varied the gameplay is rules wise, and I think that holds up. You know, it's not just a, a marketing point; it is a good marketing point, but it's also reality in that y- you have so many different characters, so many different modes, all the different multi balls you can play. You can try to stack all six multi balls. Um, if you want to just plow through the game, you can pick uh, Norrington and you know brick your way to the end of the game. You know. But it still takes a lot of effort to get there, even with the characters that help you get there. So, um, yeah. And look, we didn't even we didn't talk about <clears throat> some things like, oh, there's a button on the game, and what does that do? Again, you don't need to know that to progress through the game. You don't need to know that to if you're playing a if you're playing a long ball and having a good game in that sense of just keeping the ball and playing and hitting shots. Even if you don't know that, you're still going to beat people who have a shorter game and know that, right? Like you don't. It will give you an advantage, and as any pinball should, where you know the rules, but it's not such a lopsided thing where that's such a harm of not knowing it. But speaking of which, you know, like that, there is that button there, and you can choose, you, you get choice in the game. So, I mean, first of all, you get choice of the character when you start it, and then that action button will let you choose do I want a, a 2x to try to, and you complete that by hitting the uh, pirate um, in lanes, out lanes, and spelling pirate, and then hitting the pirate shot next to the chest. But there's like hold bonus you can select as a thing. There's an add a ball during multi ball. There's a, the super X, which will be a play field multiplier. There's a shot X. There's a hurry up. These are things that all people know, anyways. I mean, they're not super complicated. Um, there's gold in the game that I, I see new players, they don't understand gold. I'm going to tell you right now, everybody, here's how gold works. Uh, when you hit the gold targets or you complete character shots in the game, 
or you get a random award, you'll probably hear Gibbs say, gold, aha. All right, he'll make a little noise. There'll be a go noise. There's a flasher by the left upper flipper that changes to gold in color. All you got to do is keep on hitting that action button until it turns off. Stop hitting it after it turns off. You're not doing anything. All right, there's also the LCD, which is hard to see. Um, that's also indicating that's what's going on. I know the game is chaotic and you're trying to collect gold while the action's happening, which makes it fun. But that's it. And then once you get 50 gold, you get to go to Tortuga Multiball. Oh, Jesus, there's Martha. <laughs> I had to switch back for that. <laughs> uh, so, again, not a lot going on. Depth, not complicated. All right. right. It, yeah, it's one of those games where, like, surface level, it's pretty straightforward. You can get through the game. But over time, as you have it in your house and you dig deeper, you can get into all this other stuff, which is what makes it such a great game in the long term for your home, right? Like, that's what you want for a home game. You want uh, something you can get into easily, a, a theme you like that kind of, like, sets sets the stage for, for an enjoyable experience. And then once you've had it and you've played it a bunch, there's still new things to discover and new things to do. Um, one of the other things overall that I like about this game that we haven't talked about a lot is just the number of diverters and the way the ball paths and, you know, ball paths has become a thing, I feel like, since Godfather. But um, that's the thing that keeps games interesting to me is that you're not always getting the same return from the shot that you hit, right? The shot between the to the chest can either come around or you can get locked in the chest. If you shoot uh, the shot to the left of the chest, it can either come all the way around through the pops or it can get grabbed by a magnet and fed up into the ship. The left ramp, it can go all the way around and return to a flipper or it can go into the uh, um, the maelstrom ramp and come out of scoop. Uh, there's all sorts of good stuff. There's, there's uh, subways under there that uh, keep the ball coming out in interesting places. Uh, so yeah, it's just this is this is a, like a lightning in a bottle kind of game that uh, I think Nike nailed it. Where he said we're not going to see a game like this again for a long time. I mean, I hope we do, but it seems unlikely because for a number of reasons why why this game is as good as it is and why it is so unlikely to happen again anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play it today again because I love it so much. Um. Uh I think I the, the only downside to this game is there's no final wizard mode in it yet, right? Okay, yeah. So this game, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my review right now. It's a it's a nine point nine, and we we don't normally usually we do like you know a solid number or, or like or a know, half nine point yeah. five. Uh, it has no wizard mode. Okay, and um, that is to me, <laughs> it's very very disappointing. This game is a masterpiece, and not to put the final touch on it. Do not put something that is absolutely should be in the game. It's not like this was a game created that had no intention of having a wizard mode, and that's what it is. No, it's missing something that's supposed to be in their game. It's not finished by the team. Um, I don't know why this happens. I, I wish Jersey Jack would have a policy that they wouldn't do something or wouldn't allow this, or at least provide an explanation to us. Um, it kills me that there's not. I mean, I actually stopped playing this game shortly after I got it because I was having a really good game one day and I, you know, I, I was like, I, I could see myself maybe getting to the end. I didn't want to spoil it. Maybe that's a weird way to think. And then I just, as the years, as time went, as the months went by and then years, I was like, oh my God, it's so weird. Now people say, oh, it's a wizard mode. Nobody's ever going to see. It doesn't matter. That's not like, it doesn't, it's supposed to have something. This game is not finished. Now this game has more code, more features, more depth than any game I can think of that's ever been made. Okay, that's a that's a profound statement. So even without the wizard mode, it has more than any game you can go out and buy on the market right now. But it needs the it also it's also true that it needs the wizard mode to be in there to be a completed masterpiece. And I hope to God that we see it. I hope this team, I hope this builds more interest in pirates. I hope it gives a level of appreciation for a game that some people haven't seen. Seek one out. You know, I've got <laughs> I, we got friends in league. I was like, anytime someone wants to come over, you want to play it, I'll show you how to play the game. You can spend some time on it. All right, like, this game's amazing. We've done a tutorial on it years ago, really trying to explain it for people. And I and I get, like, it's 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 rough because, like, I would never go out and buy a $20,000 game, $25,000 game. 
You know, it absolutely sucks, especially a used game. I wouldn't do that. So I can see like being apathetic about it, but um, just don't, don't, don't kid yourself. This is uh this is something else. And, and let's all hope that it gets remedy and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see this rerun. I mean, if, if Nick's going to give it a 9.9, I'm going to do it too, because uh, I, I think yeah, we don't always agree on games, but this is one we definitely agree on. Um, incredible, incredible game. Once in a, once in a generation kind of game, somebody uh, kind of drew a parallel between that and uh, and Twilight Zone of its time. I, I, can, I can see the comparison there. Um, yeah, nine point nine. Put that wizard mode in, and it's a ten. All day, every yep. day, all day. It's it deserves to be a ten. It needs that wizard mode. It is this game is nine point nine with an asterisk should be a ten. 